Hi everyone, my name is Hayley Buttigieg and I'm a Year 11 student at Damascus College in Ballarat. Today we are here to interview Professor Misty Jenkins at Wee High about her inspiration on girls and women in science. Hi everyone, I'm Professor Misty Jenkins, a laboratory head here at the WEHI and also co-head of research strategy for the Brain Cancer Centre. And we're delighted to be coming to you with a special episode for the International Day of Women and Girls in Science. What is the best thing about being a scientist? I think the best part about being a scientist is definitely the joy of discovery. You know, finding things out that have never been discovered before, that end up going into textbooks into the future because you've discovered something new about biology and the way the body works, that's extraordinary. Or having the privilege and the opportunity, like I do in my job, to create new therapies that you know will hopefully one day go into the clinic and help people yeah. and solve their disease is a wonderful privilege. And I also love, um, working with other people. So, you know, we, my day is so varied. I meet patients and families, I meet students, I meet other scientists, I meet the doctors. And so I love the, the sort of rich, varied nature of my day as well. Yeah, that's amazing. So if in your role, do you have any idols or people that you look up to? Oh, thanks Hayley. I think on International Day of Women and Girls in Science, it's a really nice time to reflect on, you know, some amazing female mentors and sponsors I've had over the years. Um, Maggie Evans Scalia, Fiona Stanley, Gillian Griffiths. I've been really lucky to have senior scientists and you know that have become friends as well, but who have really instilled in me, well, people that I found very inspiring yeah. and motivated me um, and then you know and then supported me yeah. as well. So I've been very fortunate that I've had amazing people to look up to and definitely encourage lots of other other young girls and women that if you don't already have mentors that, that they are a really important part of the journey and they, they certainly have been for me. In your career there is obviously some emotional times you have to get through. How do you overcome those emotional events? Yeah I think first of all not hiding away from the emotion. I'm quite a vulnerable leader so I think that like being emotional it's okay you know and I'm getting emotional now because we work in brain cancer and so that's <laughs> That's triggering because that's the most emotional part of my job is that all, you know, we meet patients that, that are dying and they don't have time. They don't have time to wait for our therapies, a lot of them. And so that can be really heavy sometimes. Sorry. <laughs> but that's, that's, the, that's the emotional part of the job. And that's a real part of the job because we are human at the end of the day, you know, and we hear their stories and we meet these families. And so, how we come back from that is by, rec by recognising why we're here, why we're doing what we're doing. We're here to create new therapies for brain cancer. And the reality of that, meeting the families and hearing their stories is so emotional and so hard. But then we remind ourselves why we're here and why we're doing what we're doing. And that gives us a purpose. And then we go home and we have a cry and we get up the next morning and we come in with even more passion and more vigour. Um, and that's why, I do, that's why I do what I do. Yeah, and you have a supporting team to help you get through it all. Yeah, and we talk it out and we talk about things. And um, yeah, because you know, you spend a lot of time at work and they become your family, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, certainly we are in a lot of ways. So, you know, all really close, work, working closely together. So it's really, really nice. Yeah. So now your lab is a team. So how do you find being with communication with a whole heap of scientists and working all together? Yeah, great question because we're all human. And even though we're all scientists, humans are really all different people and they have different drivers and they have different motivations and respond to things in different ways. So um, it's a really different, so it's one job, it's one thing to be good at being a scientist and it's a very different job, you know, to be a, a leader of scientists yeah. as well. I love working in a team. I'm a team player quite naturally. And, um, and so it's really important to me that my team get along, you know, that yeah. they're a good fit. They're all really different people with different drivers and different motivations um, and work in different ways. And so, um, but we all come together and work collectively well, really, really well together. And we, you know, we make sure that we enhance that by getting together and doing lots of social things as well. Yeah. So if you were a teenager again, Missy, would you have seen yourself as a scientist? I didn't know what I wanted to be and that's okay. You know, yeah. I think I would say to young girls, 
if they're interested in science, you know, to go and do a science degree. But just because you do a science degree also doesn't mean that you're going to be a scientist or that you have to be a scientist. It's a pathway to a whole wide, you know, ranging group of different careers. Do you remember the point where you decided that you wanted to study science or immunology? Yes, I think it was actually when I was about your age. I was at high school and um, it was uh, when I finished high school actually commemorated Edward Jenner's smallpox vaccine back in the late 90s. And that was when I started learning about infection and immunity and I was just fascinated by it. And I thought, well, I might just go and do a Bachelor of Science and I don't know what it will happen after that horizon. That was as long as, you know, three years was a long time to commit to back then <laughs> when you're 17 and making these decisions. Do you set goals? And if so, how do you set them efficiently? Yes, great question, because goal setting is a really important part, um, I think, of being a scientist, but also really being any professional. I think, do you know, actually, that actually um, only 1% of people write their goals down? Um, it's a living, breathing document. So I do write them down and I revisit it all the time and try and update it um, and then break them down into kind of small achievable chunks you know I think when you set a goal like writing a thesis it's very overwhelming but when you break it down to I'm gonna write a paragraph you know every day it writes itself. Yeah. Um, so to get here you have studied a lot is there one study technique that you use that you found so efficient? Yeah I think so certainly when I was younger I definitely had I had study groups at university which were really helpful. So as an undergraduate, you know, we would go to a lecture and we would be bombarded with all the information and then we would meet and have study group and we would like talk about the lecture and we'd break it down into small parts again and say, well, I'm gonna take a deep dive into this introduction section and you take a deep dive into that and let's get together in an hour and share what we know and make sure that, and ask questions to each other and make sure we really understand something. So those little study groups were fantastic. And now, um, and now as I'm getting older, I still, I love the group, the group think sometimes when we're trying to tackle problems and solve them. Um, uh, and then also, you know, depending on the task, there, I need really quiet reflection where I'll have to just, you know, block out my diary, close the door and just have time to really think deeply about something. How do you feel encouraging more women to put their self in leadership positions? I would, I, we need to see more women in leadership positions. Yeah. You know, we're not going to solve um, brain cancer, we're not going to solve just complex problems in the world yeah. with one part of the population. We need, you know, we need diversity in all ways, both in gender and also in inter intersectionality. Yeah. You know, women of colour, um, not English speaking backgrounds, um, more queer scientists, the whole spectrum. And so, you know, with that diversity comes creativity and comes innovation. Yeah. It's really, really important. What are some wise words that you would like to pass on to girls that are aspiring to enter the science field? I don't know if it's wise, but overcome your imposter syndrome. You can do it, be curious, and continue to just ask all of those questions. You know, there's so much to discover and there's so much we don't know. Mm -hmm. Be that one pestering in the, in the classroom with your hand up, asking more questions of your teachers, know how to find reputable sources of information and learning how to learn. And so, you know, it's really important that we as young people learn how to learn, that we learn how to ask a question we learn how to find the answer, how, how to go to and how to distinguish reputable sources from information and not. And know how to do that in an independent way, you know, in a self-driven, independent way. Yeah. Thank you so much, Misty, for talking to me today. It has inspired me and I hope it inspires more females wanting to enter science. I can't wait to see where your research goes and talk to you again. Thanks so much, Hayley. It's been such a pleasure and I can't wait to see where your career is going to go. <laughs>